Hello and welcome to the Design Make Play Show. I'm Sarah and I'm an illustrator and designer at Zen Maker Lab. And today we're going to talk about the different programs that we can animate in. And I'm going to show you guys a short little demonstration of how to animate in Procreate. So let's get started. So what is frame by frame animation? Well, this is the traditional method used in all animation and it's the technique used to create the illusion of movement through incremental changes between each keyframe. And I'm going to show you guys what that looks like so we get a better idea and I'm going to show you some uh, methods of animating. So I'm going to dive into my presentation here. So to start with, this example is showing this turtle moving frame by frame in incremental changes. So what you're seeing here is the start pose is the keyframe, this middle pose is another keyframe, and the ending pose is another keyframe. So frame by frame is between those keyframes showing this character moving in motion. So for the animators, they have to draw every single movement of this character moving all by hand traditionally. So it's a lot of work that goes into this. And here's another example showing you guys what this looks like, the character moving in motion. And this example, again, shows um, a gesture and an expression of a character moving incrementally. So there's so much work that goes into this, um, but this is kind of the keystone of all animation, but we've uh, advanced obviously from, from that point now. So I'm gonna show you guys some methods of the uh, past of animating and then to now what we've been doing in 2020. So to begin with, the first method of animating was called celluloid or cells and this image showing this guy working here, um, he is drawing on cell paper which is translucent paper that can be layered on top of each other. So everything that they are animating has to be drawn on this paper and it's stacked on layers and they have to do the drawing, the inking, the painting. So it's a very big process um, to create films like this and it wasn't the most commonly used. Um, back then, but now it's it's pretty ancient, I'd say. And some examples to show you guys of what um, what movies did this was Steamboat Willie was one of them, and then Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was actually a very historical moment for Disney because it was the first colored uh, cartoon and one of the last uh, celluloid movies made because there was so much work that went into it um, and they had a million sheets of cell paper so you can imagine how much work that was. And then Bugs Bunny also used this technique. So now I'm going to show you guys a YouTube example so you get a visual understanding of what this looks like. So here the characters are moving and again everything you're seeing is drawn by hand in incremental changes frame by frame. Um, and then you can see the background is stagnant. So that's what they were doing then and then moving forward into using color and inking behind the scenes the women were working on different cell sheets and they were in charge of um, making the different layers and drawing over top of pencil drawings and then after that point, they would move on to uh, the coloring stage. And Disney actually created their own color palettes, which is kind of cool. The next example is stop motion. And this is really cool because this type of animation um, was also used historically a long time ago, but is still used because it has a really appealing, unique look. And what you're seeing this guy, he's doing, um, he is moving these physical puppets all by hand. So every single little change of that character moving and his face changing and the expressions, everything, that um, is what stop motion is and that person's in charge of making that character move all by hand. So again, a lot of work um, is put into stop motion, but again, it has such a unique look, that's why um, it's worthwhile. So this is one example um, of a movie that did this, Chicken Run, and then Early Man, and The Nightmare Before Christmas also used this technique. So I'm gonna show you guys a YouTube example of what this looks like. So, in this video, what you're seeing is this lady, she's carving each different expression and face of different characters. So everything they do has to be done by hand, 
and then they're making the entire sets by hand. Um, there's someone who's moving and constructing the character um, to make them look like they're moving in motion. So again, crazy amount of work um, for this type of animation, but it's super cool and you can get a greater appreciation when you're watching these kind of films. And then we have 2D animation, which is kind of the mix of traditional as well as digital. So um, they're using the computer, but they're also uh, drawing by hand for the characters. So one example of a movie that does this is The Emperor's New Groove. So as you can see, um, it's still flat, so it's not 3D, but it uh, does have a little bit of a different look than, than painted. So here's another one. Hercules was an example of this, and Lilo and Stitch. And I'm gonna show you guys quick little video of what that is. So again, someone drew uh, what this character looks like in paper and then they bring it into the digital programs. They do all the coloring, the refinement, and then they bring it into After Effects to do those special effects and really uh, work on the lighting and the mood of the animation. So the last animation method I'm gonna show you guys um, is 3D animation and it's most similar to stop motion animation because they're puppets as well, but they're actually digital puppets. So uh, stop motion is actually physical puppets that you know you can manipulate, but 3D is puppets that the animators create in the screen, but they still have complete control over what they do and how they move. So there's no drawing involved um, like 2D or celluloid. And some example of movies that do this technique is Toy Story. So you can see that these movies, again, they aren't flat, they're 3D, so they look um, really like real life and that they're popping out of the screen. This is Finding Nemo. And then we have, lastly, The Incredibles. And I'm gonna show you guys my final example. So, again, everything they create in these movies, they still have to do it by hand, but it's, it's done digitally. And these characters from Madagascar, again, were all created by hand. They have to pretty much build and construct these characters, do all the shading, the lighting from every angle so that they look like the real deal and that they're like a living object in the screen. So yeah, they're pretty much puppets, but digitally done. So those are some examples of different animation methods. And hopefully you guys have a little bit of an understanding of frame by frame and uh, can get a greater appreciation for how animation works. So ultimately, what I hope you guys took away from today is that there's a lot of different methods of animating. And the ones we covered today, um, we covered celluloid, 2D animation, 3D animation, and stop motion. So they're all different in many ways, but also similar in some. So I hope you guys learned something new, and next time you're watching a movie or a TV series, you can think about a couple of these things. So have fun, and I'll see you in the next segment.